coming up on this week's episode of Punt It Long. Alan Stubbs gets the sack from St Mirren after a terrible summer of recruitment and results. Celtic played Rangers on what was a bit of an anticlimactic occasion. We welcome two new members to Good Guys FC. The Scottish FA appeal system is featured in this week's Hugh Belland and the usual chat about them film an athletic football club. Enjoy! Earlier this week, Alan Stubbs was sacked from St Mirren. He'd only been in the job three months and he'd only managed about ten games for St Mirren but I think this one had underlying meanings to it really. In the past few years, St Mirren have obviously been in the second tier in the Scottish Championship and last season they were by far the better team in the Scottish Championship. I think they definitely proved week in week out that they could grind out results as well as play really good football with players like Lewis Morgan, Cammy Smith Gavin Riley even, putting in really good performances week in week out and got them to their end goal eventually. Obviously a big factor in them eventually going back up was their manager Jack Ross. He was rebuilding a squad, he was building a camaraderie within the club and the fans and of course Jack Ross left St Mirren kind of just after the season ended. Jack Ross obviously went to Sunderland and that left a vacant managerial position at St Mirren. The man to fill that void was Alan Stubbs, that was the man chosen by the St Mirren board. Alan Stubbs only lasted the same amount of time in this job simply due to the fact that it literally didn't work at all. He let go 18 players of the championship were inside and brought in 13, some of which were actually Jack Rossi's signings before he departed for Sunderland. Six of the signings though were on two or more year deals, which is kind of less St Mirren in a bit of a sticky situation because whoever comes in is kind of stuck with the same players that Stubbs was stuck with. And the problem with these players is that the vast majority of them have played very little football in their careers. I mean, most of them have played less football than I have in my professional career. And I'm not even a professional, so what does that say really? They've played basically no first team football in their career either. One of the signings was the club's highest ever paid amount of money for a player to bring them in. Obviously they spent money on bringing the player in, but he'd barely played any football in the last year or so. To make a commitment like that and make it the club's kind of record fee in the last 10 years, it's a real risk. I mentioned it in my predictions video when I put St Mirren in the relegation playoff spot and a number of players but he's also let go a lot of players and I think the thing with St Mirren was they were building up this core squad and the fact that they had the close relationship with the fans etc. That's kind of all been a bit thrown up in the air and I still firmly believe what I said back then. St Mirren were really building something and I of course that had a lot to do with Jack Ross and the way he managed the team and the kind of spirit that he brought around the full club in general and not just the playing staff. But keep the majority of that squad and you've still got a team that's willing to fight and scrap for everything to do with St Mirren Football Club. Just saying. You've got to feel sorry for Alan Stubbs. He gave it a crack but it just didn't work out for the start. A bad summer of recruitment as I've mentioned and the results weren't much better. Drawn against two amateur teams in pre-season slash the Betfred Cup. That's no way to start a career as a manager of a club. You got given a three year deal and it's been cut three months into it. That kind of says it all. <laughs> of course at the weekend, the old firm, the Glasgow Derby, Celtic v Rangers happened. Ultimately. It was a bit anticlimactic, wasn't it? It's the kind of thing that on these type of shows I need to speak about it. It's the biggest game in Scotland. It'll always be that, really. So I'm going to have to talk about it in some way. As I said, I just think it was so anticlimactic. It was built up to be Rangers showing exactly how they've improved. And although the European game that they'd had a few nights before would have had a massive impact on the players that eventually played because it was a lot of the same players that played in both games. However, Rangers, I thought, were a completely different team under Steven Gerrard and the fact that they went to Parkhead not really with a game plan as such or it just didn't look like it, the players just didn't look like they could really function that on the pitch it just, it was just the usual Celtic Rangers game in my opinion Celtic had a lion's share of possession, they had so much chances and they could have easily won by 3 or 4 I don't know, it was just so underwhelming really in my opinion A statement I also made a few weeks ago was that Alfredo Morelos was a new man I believe I made it on Punt It Long actually, either one or two weeks ago. For all that it is under Steven Gerrard, it is in certain games. The Celtic Rangers games always seems to flux Alfredo Morelos. He never seems to perform in them and every time that he gets a chance he always misses it. There was one on the weekend as well, even though Rangers had limited chances, Morelos actually did have a chance to bring them back into the game at one point and it was similar to the ones that he's had in previous games. Ultimately, 
that's where Rangers end up falling flat on these games because they have the chances within the game as you would with any team in any game but they need to take them in these games because if you're not actually that close to Celtic in terms of quality, in terms of possession then you're going to have to take the chances when they come and with Alfredo Morelos that is certainly a side of the game that he has to improve on as well as his temperament and attitude when it comes to the game in general. As I said, just really anticlimactic and for me as a neutral, it was just quite a disappointing occasion. Right, we've had a slight problem with Good Guys FC this week because although I said at the start of the video that two new members would be added on to here, my printer's broke. So, life just kicks you in the teeth sometimes, eh, when you try to be nice. For all that the printers tried to pull it back this week, I'm still going to include it. This week I just have to include these guys in Good Guys FC. Welcome aboard, Stephen Dobby and Chris Dillon. It's been well noted, my kind of admiration for Stephen Dobie in recent weeks. He's scored a shit ton of goals. He's scored about 18 already this season, which is absolutely crazy. And the guy just oozes class. He's, what, 35? And he's ripping the league apart. He'll be up there as soon as the printer decides to kick up again. And Chris Doolan, he's got 100 plus goals for Partick Thistle. He's just a class guy. That ghost goal at the weekend that I showed on the last word, and I'm sure everyone's seen it now, he has been awarded the goal bonus by Partick Thistle for that goal because he did. It was a goal, but he decided to donate all the goal bonus to Beats and Cancer Charity. If that doesn't ooze class, I don't know what does. Chris Doolan is one of the people that you'll look at and you'll think that's a retro footballer playing in modern football circumstances. For a player to even do that after scoring a perfectly good goal and getting it chopped off ludicrously he's then went and donated it to charity all the goal bonus money it's class and that is why he'll eventually get his face up there in good guys fc it's that time of the week again for the part of the episode called the scottish fa appeals panel now what are they for what do they actually do that benefits the game in Scotland now because this is now what three or four times in the last few weeks that challenges have been brought up whether it's non-Rangers Celtic mainly Rangers or whether it's actually Rangers or Celtic players mainly Rangers as I said getting involved in these incidents now at the weekend you seen one Alan McGregor kicking out at Christopher Iyer and that was turned down no action taken Alfredo Morelos kicking out at Scott McKenna, I believe it was, when they played Aberdeen weeks back. That was turned down. Nothing happened. Since then, or in between then, you've had Michael Devlin and his red card is staying as a red card. The fact that these are being compared to other incidents where it's clearly a red card, like for example the one at the weekend, Stephen Gerrard himself came out and said that was a red card. So how can the Scottish appeals panel look at that and not decide to give it a red card. You've then got Gary Dicker of Kilmarnock making a tackle that was pretty fine in my opinion. I didn't see anything wrong with it, but it was given a straight red card and then turned down. The way that the Scottish FA Appeals Panel looks at smaller clubs compared to clubs like Rangers is very strange. These incidents can keep happening in a game that it's serious. When you look back on incidents, that's what the Scottish Appeals Panel is for. So the Scottish FA Appeals Panel is there for incidents that happen during the game that don't get brought up by the referee. You can then look at it back on the video and decide the right call for it. And 100% these haven't been the right calls in the last few weeks. They've made it into U-Berlin this week simply just down to the fact that the outrage it's caused. And it's just so ludicrous how these decisions are continuing to happen. At such a high level in Scotland. And as usual, here I'm bundled on, we'll go full circle and back to my team, Dunfermline. <laughs> this time last week, I was standing here saying stuff like, onto the team, this Saturday, give us a reaction on the pitch. <laughs> well, that didn't really happen, did it? But we're still going to Boreham Wood, yes! Bus booked, hotel booked, and going to see the reserves play against the non league English side in the Ambrew Cup. What more could you want for your weekend? Who ever said the Amber Cup was completely pointless, eh? And that's it for this episode, guys. Cheers for watching. If you did enjoy, please give it a like, comment down below about anything I've said, and subscribe for more of this type of content. I'm going to Boreham Wood, as I said, so there'll be a vlog out for that on Sunday, and then the last word as well. There won't be any pars roundup this week, just simply due to the fact that I'm travelling to Boreham Wood on the Friday night, so there'll be no time to film a pars roundup. But that's it for this video, guys. So until the next one, I'll see you then. Cheers, guys. Oh,